We are here in uh, Hoboken, very proud to kick off uh, June with a flag raising, which has been a tradition uh, here in Hoboken for several years. Hoboken is and always will be a welcoming community where all are welcome, no matter your gender, sexual preference, or other means of identification. This year, for the first time in Hoboken, we've actually painted our, our crosswalks with the pride colors. This is a symbol of uh, not just our ongoing commitment to inclusive policies for all, but also to Hoboken's LGBTQ history and all those that have worked so hard before us, including Paul Somerville and Alan Kratz, who will speak to uh, who will speak as well shortly. Before going further, I just want to say a huge thank you to uh, several people. First, uh, Laura Niddle, who is um, the administration's liaison to the LGBTQ community. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, Huge uh, thank you to Migdalia uh, Pagan Milano from our Office of Constituent Affairs who worked very hard on the crosswalk over there. Um, I can't say enough uh, in terms of gratitude to our city engineer, Kimberly Kraft. She worked very hard to make sure these crosswalks were here. So Kimberly, if you're here, I just want to say thank you very much. And uh, this would not be possible without the Hoboken Police Department. They um, uh, oversaw everything that happened with the crosswalks, making sure they got done in a timely manner, uh, not to obstruct any uh, flow of traffic. So thank you very much to the Hoboken Police Department. And um, we look forward to celebrating um, the tail end of uh, the Pride Week celebration in August with the painting of another crosswalk uh, in Uptown Hoboken as well. Um, so it's not, it's, uh, crosswalks are symbols, but in addition to symbols, you actually really need policies and action to, to back those symbols of what you believe in. And I'm proud to say as mayor that in my first year and a half, we have um, enacted a number of policies and done a number of things to advance uh, further equality and justice for the LGBTQ community. Among those things, um, and a reflection of those things, is the first time uh, last year we received a 100% score from the Human Rights Campaign, uh, and we are one of only two municipalities in the state of New Jersey to receive that 100% score last year. Um, and that is in no small part to the many things we did last year to try to elevate the voices of the LGBTQ community. We also are proud to be the first city in the state of New Jersey to enact an ordinance along with the city council to have gender neutral bathrooms in all places of public accommodation. Uh, that was a first um, in, in, uh, in New Jersey and it was really to send a message uh, to, um, to businesses, to the community that we also um, care about equality for the transgender community Nobody should feel uncomfortable um, when, when um, picking a place to uh, use the restroom. And it was, a, it, it was important to make sure that we have, a, we have equality and uh, make sure that the trans tra transgender community um, has that sense in not just a symbolic way, but a real way. So that gender neutral bathroom ordinance, which we've enacted and has been in effect for a year and a half is also something we're very proud of. We also enacted an executive order for non-discrimination um, for contractors, and we're also working with Hudson Pride for Hoboken's first ever Pride Week celebration in, in, in August to coincide with Hudson County Pride. And again, I want to just thank uh, Laura Niddle, Migdalia, Hudson Pride once again for working with us. So uh, having said all that, I want to introduce our first speaker today. Uh, she is um, our Hoboken liaison uh, to the LGBTQ community. Her name is Laura Niddle. Last year, I officially appointed Laura Niddle to our LGBTQ plus pride community, um, and I'm proud of all the work she's done in her lifetime. 
Laura and her partner of 14 years were married in City Hall in 2013, the first year it was legal to do so, and Laura has been one of the voices for the LGBTQ plus community um, during her lifetime. She's faced adversity in her life, but she has responded with resilience and passion for helping others, including her work with the Hoboken Library and other endeavors. Laura, if you wouldn't mind to come up and say a few words. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank the mayor and distinguished guests and all of you for being here today. Today we want to announce that Hoboken, the theme for Pride this year, is we celebrate Hoboken Pride without prejudice. We are going to celebrate Hoboken Pride without prejudice. I also want to say this is another great day for the city of Hoboken. I know I don't have too much time to speak, so I'll be as brief as possible. <laughs> but I wanted to talk today about gratitude. And if I may, I want to share a quote. And it's written by Dr. Cassandra Brene Brown, who is a research professor at the University of Houston, where she holds the Huffington Foundation Endowed Chair, and she's the, the Graduate College of Social Work. She has spent her career studying courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy. And her quote is quite simple, but I'd like for you all to remember it today as we move forward in the season of pride, as we just move forward in life. The quote is this, what separates privilege from entitlement is gratitude. What separates privilege from entitlement is gratitude. And I cannot say enough today, I cannot say enough thank yous to the people behind me, to all of you in front of me. It is so critical, all that you do as friends and family and alliances in listening to us, in tolerating us, in loving us, in educating yourselves about us, and painting crosswalks walks at six o'clock in the morning, bending your knees with a paintbrush, and striking the pavement, despite what the world may say, I say thank you. And I say with gratitude in my heart, thank you. Because without you, there would be no me, and vice versa. <coughs> Excuse me. The, la the other thing I want to say, and thanks to the mayor for allowing me to be a liaison. I know many times I can be quite serious. But I want you to know, on my journey as liaison for the last year, I've had people come and say, how can we celebrate? What programs, what workshops, how can we party? That's wonderful, and we're gonna do that. But throughout this year, I've had people come to me. I've had transgender people come to me, to the library sometimes, call me outside and say, I've lost my, ho I lost my health care. I have cancer. I've lost my home. <coughs> Where do I go? And of course, I can send them to Hudson Pride and wherever else I can do. <coughs> Secondly, I've had grandmothers come to me even at the library, you're a public library, and they know me as liaison, and they will say, you know, my granddaughter is gay, but my daughter doesn't accept her. What do I do? Where do I go? My friends, as a liaison, I can try to help, but I can't do it alone. So I ask with gratitude in my heart that you listen to your community. If you don't know where to send them, ask. If you're unsure or you question, let them know we're here. But with gratitude in my heart, I thank you for keeping this dialogue and engagement going. As you know, a few years ago, I came to speak about the, the shooting in Orlando. And part of my speech <coughs> talked about us talking and gathering and dialoguing in our coffee houses, in our churches, in our schools. And guess what? Hoboken is doing it. You are doing it. A round of applause. <laughs> and we. And we currently have a mayor who, without a blink of an eye, when I asked for the crosswalks to be painted, it didn't think twice. Do you know? 
<laughs> what a gift. Thank you, Mayor. So the last thing I want to close with is that in this season, we want to celebrate, and please do, and come to our events in August and in June. <clears throat> Across the river today, we know Pride is happening, and we know they're celebrating Stonewall of 50 years. And Stonewall was a riot. Gay Pride came from a riot. And so Pride is not just about, you know, the proudness of it all, <clears throat> but it's about the history, it's about the evolution, it's about love from you, from me, it's so deeply rooted in love, and how could we go wrong? And I'll say thank you again with gratitude. And remember this, without rain, we'd have no rainbows. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, I just want to uh, make a correction. I said it was the first uh, first Gay Pride Week in Hoboken. Th this is actually uh, the second annual Gay Pride Week uh, that we're honoring. Um, so just wanted to uh, make that correction. Also wanted to acknowledge some, some dignitaries here in attendance with us. We have um, from the 33rd District, Assemblywoman Annette Shapiro. Thank you, Annette. We have uh, Hoboken's own uh, freeholder, Anthony Romano. Thank you, Anthony. We have our second ward councilwoman, Tiffany Fisher, with us. Councilwoman, thank you. And we also have our councilwoman at large, Emily Jabour, with us. Thank you, Emily. Our next um, speaker is uh, Elizabeth uh, Shadel from the Hudson Pride Center. She's the chief operations officer. The Hudson Pride Center has been an invaluable partner in Hoboken. I thank them for providing ongoing assistance as we continue to promote inclusive policies in our city. Last year, they helped lead the way for Hoboken's first ever Pride Week celebration, and we look forward to continued partnership in the years ahead. Uh, please, uh, Elizabeth, if you might come up and say a few words. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Happy June Pride Month, everyone. <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much to the mayor and the city of Hoboken for having me here today to speak on behalf of Hudson Pride Center. As many of you know, Hudson Pride is the local LGBTQ community center for Hudson County. Uh, we serve all of Hudson County and offer an array of social support and health services to our queer community. Our team is dedicated to supporting and helping queer individuals on a daily basis. Whether it's connecting someone to healthcare, HIV testing, PrEP counseling, uh, HRT services or referrals, um, you know, um, PrEP, ev everything that has to do with PrEP and um, support there, LGBTQ supportive OBGYNs in our area. Um, to helping someone who is experiencing homelessness, to helping individuals who are having trouble coming out as a youth and young adult, to families that are not accepting them. We provide that support system and we are that chosen family for these individuals. We are here and we want to help. June marks Pride Month nationally and August marks Pride Month for Hudson County. I'm often asked what Pride means and what these events are all about. I believe it's something different for everybody. The meaning has all different forms. For the pride events and the parades, I believe it's part celebration, it's part protest, and it's part bringing our community together to celebrate our lives. Uh, for me, working at Hudson Pride and seeing the effects that we have on individuals on a daily basis, I believe it's about taking pride in the fact that you have a community that is fighting for you, that has fought for you, and will continue to do this for each other. Today we raise the flag in Hoboken on that very same belief. That Hoboken is a city that believes in equality for all, that will stand with us and up for us. I'm proud to be here today on behalf of Hudson Pride and witness this flag raising for Hoboken. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have been so proud to know Paul Somerville and Alan Kratz for so many years, 
and today they will, uh, Paul and Alan, Paul and Alan will ceremoniously raise the pride flag. Paul and Alan have a long-standing history of fighting for equal rights for the LGBTQ populations when it wasn't popular to do so. Paul and Allen were leaders and gay act of, in the Gay Activist Alliance of Hudson County, and Allen was president of the New Jersey Lesbian and Gay Coalition in the 1980s. Paul and Allen were the first couples in Hoboken to register as domestic partners. In 2013, Paul and Allen were one of the first couples to be registered to be married after the state legalized same-sex same marriage. We are so proud to have Paul and Allen be a part of our community. Paul and Allen, the stage is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Today is a great day and it's gonna be a great month and this uh, fifth generation Hoboken night, curmudgeon, um, never thought this would be possible back in the day. I'm sure my ancestors would be very proud. Um, they were wise people. Um, I think it's important to remember that as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, that it was, as Laura pointed out, a riot. Um, the activities that night, uh, which spawned the um, whole gay rights movement, were legal actions on the part of the police who were doing what they normally did, which was to enforce the anti-fraternization laws that night, as they often did. And one of the people present that night who is um, sometimes attributed with throwing the proverbial first stone was Hoboken's own Marsha P. Johnson, a transgender woman who lived often at Marine View Towers. Um, and it's because of people like Marsha who said no more uh, that we're here today. And, uh, you know, it, it is 50 years on. The rainbow flag is a symbol of inclusivity. Um, and I'm proud to uh, be here with my husband of 34 years. That's 68 in straight years, for those of you who don't know. Um, and Alan. So one of the mistakes, <clears throat> one of the mistakes I've made in my marriage, and I keep making it, is following Paul to the podium. He's a good speaker. Uh, Paul and I are delighted, Mayor Bala, that you've invited us to raise the rainbow flag. As you know, as all of us know, the word flag is spelled with four letters, F-L-A-G. 35 years ago, when Paul and I were leaders of the Gay Activist Alliance of Hudson County, the U.S. Postal Service required us to use three of those four letters of the alphabet to retrieve our mail from the post office box at the Uptown Station in Hoboken. Back in the day, postal boxes had a little combination lock that required the user to dial three letters. And as new box holders, we were assigned three letters, and I think you can imagine what those three letters were, F-A-G. So today we can laugh at the sequence of letters that was assigned to us. We can even roll our eyes at the defense of the postmaster who said that the numbers were just randomly assigned, the letters were just randomly assigned. But I think it's a lesson for us all today. However we might roll our eyes or laugh at what people have done before us, we really would do well to look inside ourselves to ask, what are we doing, what am I doing, to respect the rights, to honor the rights of people who have been suffering and who continue to experience discrimination. I recall some gay activists back in the day who were not disposed to offer equal rights to transgendered people. Some of us felt that that was a way of uh, offering equal employment rights would damage the, the prospect of legislative passage of non-discrimination legislation. I am sorry to say that I was one of those people who did not give sufficient dignity to the rights of transgendered people and was not open to providing the rights that I was sought seeking for myself. I think that's important for us as a community, and I look beyond the gay community, the LGBT community. When I say community, I'm thinking of all of us in Hoboken. It's important for us to ask, who are the others outside, at the periphery, beyond us, 
who continue to suffer from oppression, from the discrimination. How do we spell discrimination? How in our own lives do we continue to spell discrimination? And how do we dispel communication, discrimination? Those are important questions because civil rights of others always come too soon for those of us in comfortable positions of power and never soon enough for those of us who have been denied life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so today, more than raising the flag, it's time for us to raise our awareness, raise our sensitivity, and raise our action. Now is the time to live, learn, and act in a non-discriminatory way. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now it's time for the main event. I would ask uh, Paul and Alan to uh, yeah. ra to step here and uh, raise the pride flag. Okay. Mark, you good? Oh, yes, thank you. I'm good, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 